B. Imperialism in Asia By adopting various ways, the European nations imposed imperialism on the Asian nations, that is, India, China, Japan, Myanmar, Burma, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Thailand, also known as CM. Imperialism in India, the Portuguese. Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese sailor, came to the Calicut. Port of India via South African Peninsula in the year 1498 AD. Calicut is a port on the western coast of India. Vasco da Gama was allowed business concessions by King Zamorian. The Portuguese initially had great importance in the Indian politics. However, the Portuguese tried to propagate their religion, expand their rule, and business at the same time. Therefore, they couldn't set up an empire in India. They got restricted to Goa, Diu, and Daman Islands only. The Imperialism in China China is the biggest nation in terms of population in the Asian continent. It was considered to be a dormant nation till the second half of the 18th century. The Chinese people believed their culture to be the most superior of all the cultures in the world. It was the Manchurian from 1644 to 1911 which was held responsible for allowing a gigantic China to be brought under the reign of the Europeans. The Portuguese, who came to China via the sea route, were the first European traders there. They alighted at the Canton port of China in the year 1517. They were allowed concessions within the Canton port. Later on, the Portuguese captured the Macau port. After the Portuguese, the traders from France, England, in China. The coastal region of China was used by them for setting up commercial centers. Nevertheless, China didn't allow anybody to interfere into its internal region for almost 200 years. The Chinese society was molded in the ancient Confucian philosophy. The eight-point regulation announced by China imposed several restrictions on Europeans. Those who wanted to enter into China were made to pay tributes to the Chinese emperor at reconciling with China. China began earning a lot of profit by virtue of selling tea, silk and China vessels. After the Industrial Revolution, the face of China got drastically changed. The Western goods started to sell in China. For the promotion of trade, the European traders in China established an organization named Kohung. The Imperialism in Japan Japan, a nation located to the far east of Asia, is known as the Land of Rising Sun. The Portuguese, the Spanish and the Dutch people had been more or less involved in business with Japan from the 16th century. As these people tried to spread Christianity in Japan, they were expelled. Japan became a self-centered nation. The doors of Japan had been closed for the European nations for 150 years. As a result, Japan was known as a recluse, that is, hermit nation. In comparison with the Western nations, Japan was a backward, plutocratic nation. America paid special attention to Japan in 1850. It felt that Japan was a favorable place for business. With this commercial intention, America felt the need of making friendship with Japan. In the year 
1852, Commodore Matthew Perry was appointed as a chief of the American Naval Mission to Japan. Thus, Commodore Matthew Perry first came to the Gulf of Edo in Japan in 1853. He made a request to the Japanese government for ensuring safety to the American ships within the marine boundaries of Japan along with business concessions. The British With the purpose of initiating business with India, the East India Company was set up by Britain in the year 1600 AD. When the British came to India, North India was ruled by the Mughals. In 1615 AD, the East India Company was permitted to erect a business center in Surat by Bacha Jahangir. The policy of the company was concerned with only business in the beginning. However, the East India Company started to dabble in Indian politics as the Mughal rule began to show the signs of decline with intra-dynasty conflicts cropping up after the death of Bacha Aurangazeb. The Absolute Rule of the British Lord Dalhousie introduced doctrine of lapse and undertook the mission of merging the local princely states into the British Empire by rejecting the adopted successors in Jhasi, Nagpur, Satara, Sambhalpur, Udaipur, etc. The state of Ayodhya was merged under the pretext of maladministration. Other princely states were deprived of the periodic pensions and brought under the English Empire. Thus, in the hundred years between 1757 and 1857, almost the entire region of India was brought under the governance of England. The Rise of British Rule in Bengal The British victory in the Battle of Plassey in 1757 and the Battle of Baksa in 1764 paved a way for the foundation of English rule in India. The Expansion of British Rule in South India In the second half of the 18th century, South India had the domination of the Nizam, Hyder Ali and the Maratha rulers. Hyder Ali was defeated by the British in collaboration with the Nizam and the Marathas. Afterwards, Tipu Sultan, the son of Hyder Ali, too was defeated. There had been three battles between the Marathas and the British between 1775 and 1818. Maharji Shinde defeated the British in the first of these battles. However, in the second battle, the British army came off with flying colors. Finally, Bajirao II had to face defeat at the Battle of Ashti at the hands of the English army and the Maratha rulers were subdued. The Nizam had accepted the subsidiary alliance system. This system forced Nizam to station British army at his cost. Thus, the subsidiary alliance agreement helped the British to expand their territories in India. The Power Expansion in Punjab After the defeat of Marathas, except for Sikh power, all princely states in India were under the British rule. It was Maharaja Ranjit Singh who organized the members of the Sikh community. The East India Company was under the threat of the Maharaja. The British would not do any damage to the Sikh reign as long as Maharaja Ranjit Singh was on the throne. The Sikh Empire had spread in the regions of Punjab, Sindh, Kashmir and areas in Pakistan. In the wake of Maharaja Ranjit Singh's death in 1839, the quarrels among the successors of the Sikh Empire became an advantage for the British. 
The English Empire won the vast region under the Sikh Empire between 1845 and 1849. The Karnataka Battles Battles between England and France In the Karnataka region, there spring up a conflict in the bickering business affairs between England and France on the one hand and the politics at the court of the Nawab. On the other hand, all the first three battles fought in the Karnataka region were caused because of the rivalry between England and France. The first battle in this region was won by the French due to the bravery of their commander Duplex. Whereas the second battle was won by the British as their commander Robert Clive showed greater war strategy than his French counterpart could do and the French had to bring about a treaty at Pondicherry with England. In the third battle in the year 1760, England defeated the French army at Vandivash in Karnataka. As a result, there came into being a commercial domination of British. Thus, after the defeat of the French, the imperial roots of British got deeper into the Indian soil. The Cutting of the Chinese Watermelon The imperial European nations acquired various commercial concessions from China. The economic domination of China by these nations can be seen as follows. First, England controlled the business and excise of China. Second, France had the Chinese postal service under its authority. Third, Chinese railways were dominated by Europe. China was divided under the power sectors of the imperial nations. This has been known as the cutting of the Chinese melon. America had an understanding that like the African continent, China would be divided. The French The French began their trade in India from the year 1625 AD. However, the French dominated Chandranagar, Pondicherry, Karaikal, Yenam, and Mahe. The Open Door Policy America came out with its Open Door Policy in 1899 with the intentions of avoiding the actual political division of China and taking financial advantage. This policy consisted in equal rights for all nations to trade in China. All the imperial nations had given green signal to the American decision. However, Russia refused to comply with America and China remained undivided. But in the following years, the imperial nations exploited China to a large extent. The First Opium War The British merchants used to sell the opium got from India in China. The Chinese government, however, was against this business. But the European traders continued smuggling opium into China. The Chinese people would buy opium by exchanging silver, causing a stream of silver export to England. The first opium war between England and China began in the year 1840. The war saw the defeat of China, compelling the Manchu Empire signing a treaty with England. It was called the Nanking Treaty, which was signed in 1842. According to the treaty, England was given the control of four ports along with Canton Port. England won the Hong Kong Island. Taking advantage of this development, in the following ten years, America, France, Belgium, Holland, Portugal and Russia sought commercial concessions from China. The Second Opium War In the year 1856, England and France had a war against China. 
This was called as the Second Opium War. This war came to an end with the defeat of the Manchu Emperor and the Peking Treaty. By this treaty, another group of six Chinese ports were opened for the foreign traders. The business of opium was given permission. The foreign envoys were allowed to stay in Peking. The Christian missionaries were now given security and freedom of spreading their religion. Russia attacked China in 1860 and won the Sea coast of China. The fact was that the European nations had divided the vast region of China. Japan too defeated China by waging a war on it in 1894 and 1895. Japan had a part of Chinese region under its command. The Dutch The Portuguese were followed by the Dutch in India. The Dutch too were interested in business. Thus, all that they could do was to establish their control over the Southeast Asian islands only. The Kanagawa Treaty Considering the extent and strength of Perry's navy, then the Japanese Prime Minister Tokugawa Shogun signed a business agreement with America on 31st March 1854 at Kanagawa. According to this agreement, 1. America was allowed entry to the Shimonda and Hakodate ports for procuring wood, coal and water. 2. American envoy could stay in Japan. 3. The American sailors in distress should be given Japanese assistance. 4. America was allowed to do business in Japan by the local rules and regulations. In this way, the non-aligned status of Japan came to an end and the decline of Tokugawa Shogun began. England, France, Russia and Holland desired to acquire business concessions in Japan, like America. Accordingly, Japan made agreements with these nations and granted business concessions. On the basis of the granted concessions, the imperial nations prepared themselves to exploit Japan. The imperialist nations went on to have trade concessions from Japan by virtue of modern power. Japan was thus made to realize its weaknesses and change its policy towards these nations. It was during this period that the unrestrained shogun governance was subverted by the Meiji Revolution. Japan modernized itself by drastically changing the economic, political and social fields, seeking motivation from the scientific and artistic development with which the European nations had defeated Japan. After modernizing itself, Japan endured the policy of imperial expansion. On the one hand, it made an announcement that Asia was for the people of Asia and Japan for the Japanese. And on the other, with a view to imperial expansion, it defeated the powerful nations like China and Russia and annexed regions belonging to China. Japan brought Korea and Formosa under its empire. Japan, the nation which was a victim of imperialism, became a powerful imperial nation in Asia.